Okay, now the final state, the starvation state. So we're at a point where we are more than two days since our last meal. So now we are relying on stored fuel, but we also trying to spare some body protein. Remember in the fasting state, we were using some of our body protein as sources for our gluconeogenesis, but we can't do that forever because then we would have no body tissue left. So we have to preserve our body protein and use other methods of generating enough fuel for our body. Okay, so at the beginning of this whole pathway, our blood glucose concentration has started to decrease. That stimulates the pancreas to release glucagon. That glucagon is going to stimulate the liver. However, the liver has no more glycogen, so we can't rely on glycogen to increase our blood glucose concentration. Glucagon is still going to stimulate gluconeogenesis, um, but in this case, gluconeogenesis will be using glycerol. Remember that glycerol is the backbone of our triglycerides, and glycerol, um, it can f uh, get funneled into glycolysis, and it turns out, in fact, it can also do that glycolysis backwards to make glucose through gluconeogenesis. The liver, that this is one of the big changes in the starvation state. The liver is going to be um, involved in ketogenesis, in, uh, in creating or building ketones. Remember the way that we build ketones is by taking two acetyl-CoA's and going through a series of chemical reactions to create ketones. The liver is still gonna be relying on fatty acids as fuel. So in this case now, the liver is going to be releasing a whole bunch of ketones into the bloodstream. A little bit of glucose as well, but mostly but a lot of ketones into the bloodstream. The brain now can adapt to use those ketones as fuel. Um, the brain is still gonna use whatever glucose is available, but can, it can also adapt to using ketones as fuel. The ketones can also be used as energy by the muscle because of course the muscle has no more glycogen left and the muscle will use fatty acids and ketones as fuel. And then if we go back over here at our adipose tissue, the adipose tissue is, is going to continue to perform lipolysis to re release fatty acids and glycerol into the bloodstream. And that is the end of our uh, mini lecture series on energy foundations. Um, we're gonna continue to build and flesh out some of these different metabolic pathways um, when we go into our specific lectures on the individual macronutrients.